Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Call of War. If you have never heard of this game, this is a real-time strategy game that allows you to play up to 100 people in the glorious world of World War II. And yeah, it gets pretty goddamn crazy uh, when it's just 100 people playing in the battles. And this is currently my own community game. I want to go ahead and give Call of War a massive shout out for sponsoring this video. It's great to be able to play a game that I do really enjoy and also get sponsored to do so because I've just been having so much from the RP, the diplomacy. Uh, I mean, as I said, as the UK, I haven't really fought any players yet, or I haven't fought any players, but I've just been having so much fun building up and preparing myself for, you know, the oncoming wars, and everyone in the game has been so great at RPing and just, you know, not just killing each other, but just, you know, playing it out, you know, making tru uh, truces and ceasefires and everything along them lines. It's just been absolutely great. So, yeah, massive shout out to the developers for sponsoring and also to everyone who is taking part in this game as well. If you, if you guys like what you see, you can go ahead and sign up using the link down below in the description check out the game i do highly highly recommend it so yes these videos are going to basically be recap videos as the game does run in real time 24 hours in game is 24 hours out of game if you want to move units around the map it takes literal real time so for example it's gonna take 13 hours of real time for my militia to get up here on the battle line which just adds so much exciting flavor to the game because it means that you know if, if there's an invasion coming from america for example it's going to take a couple days to land here so you have to make a, a beachhead and then you need to get your reinforcements over which again takes days and that allows everyone else to move around but also means any reinforcements that come my way you know will also take hours to get here or days to get here as well so there's a real time of like planning and strategy involved which i just absolutely love in this game so as I said, these videos will kind of be like recap videos where I do run through uh, the, the past events of the past couple of days. I think every two to three days, I'll jump on and I'll, I'll tell you guys about what's been happening. Not only in my theater, but try and, I'll try and cover the rest of the world as well because obviously you guys want to see how, how everything does develop um, around it. And then I'll compile them all together and then you guys will get like two weeks worth of gameplay in one video and hopefully that will be fun and enjoyable. So this beginning part will probably take a little while just because there's a lot that happened in the world um, but I'll try and start off from the first day so as soon as the game filled up to 100 people the game started and then immediately coalitions started to form around the world I personally would have liked it maybe if we would have waited a couple days but coalitions formed nonetheless and basically what happened at least in Europe was that Romania started the axes and invited Poland Yugoslavia Italy and then later uh, the Russians I think this is central Russia right here into their alliance box and do keep in mind that every nation started it's very similar in units and also in land size. So that does mean that, you know, even though Germany is Germany, they generally don't have that many more resource resources than, say, Poland or Romania. The only thing different will be the types of resources in their land. But for the most part, they will be very, very similar in size at the beginning of the game. So we saw that. We saw that they formed this massive axis block from, you know, from Russia all the way down to Italy, which was ultra scary. So that kind of forced me and Germany into an alliance with uh, with France and also with the Spanish. So we formed the allies right here. So we have uh, obviously myself, Spain, France, Germany in the allies. I know it's kind of weird. And we also have Kazakhstan out here as well, kind of playing our wild card it's going to hopefully try and do some crazy stuff uh, and help us and support us from out here. And then maybe maybe eventually we can link up some way, whether it's through Scandinavia, Central Europe, Africa, you know, some way. Hopefully we can one day form up borders with him. Uh, but we have no plans for that you know, anytime soon. Uh, so we formed this alliance. And then a lot of people in the newspapers, which let me tell you, have been so much fun. There's been so much RP in this it's been great people coming up with storylines and i'll show a few of them off in a second because there's been some absolutely amazing ones and it's just so great that players aren't just attacking each other they're like rping stuff out and having discussions and treaties and it's just great it really is it makes this game 100 percent is with diplomacy and everything along them lines so yeah, uh, as soon as we started and all these coalitions did form around the world, we ended up in a situation where players wanted a grace period. By that I mean that no players were to attack other players. Um, because, you know, people wanted to build up, kind of get a feel for the game. A lot of people were new. So we sat down as, like, uh, the, the, the UN, for example. We suggested that for two days, there should be no player v player wars. And if anyone does break that, which you possibly, you definitely could. You could just break it if you wanted to. Uh, there was nothing stopping you from doing that. But we said that if a player was to break that rule of attacking another player within the two days, we would sanction them. So we would trade embargo, trade embargo them so they couldn't sell or buy any goods on the world market, which is 
is actually really crazy. Uh, at the moment, the price is so inflated as everyone is just buying goods. It's actually so cool trying to do this. I've been doing some marketing stuff as well behind the scenes, uh, trying to make some money on expensive goods and, and kind of undercutting people here and there. Um, but yeah, we said we would trade embargo them so they wouldn't be able to get resources. A lot of people have been sending resources to the people who broke it or again, people defending against the people who broke it and a ton of other really, really cool stuff. Um, and everyone agreed. Basically, everyone around the world agreed and basically everyone stuck to that. There was a little bit of conflict in uh, in the Middle East. I mean, who would have thought it? And in the Balkans as well. There was some uh, some tension between Yugoslavia and Greece. And at the end of day two, when people were allowed to attack each other, I believe Greece submitted to Yugoslavia because that scary allies block. Uh, down here in Syria and Egypt, there was lots of tension on the border, and both sides were RPing it out, out, RPing it out on the newspaper. You know, there was planes in the sky, and then there was a little minor conflict, and then there was loads of peace talks being held, um, which was pretty crazy. And then the biggest one was probably China, the Chinese factions fighting. I think we had communist China being attacked by these guys right here. I'm not actually sure who exactly this is. Shun Hao uh, was, was attacking them. And then because of that, everyone embargoed Shun Hao. And uh, also, I believe they also were supported by this Chinese faction and this one. And this one all started attacking them as well to try and keep that grace period going. In Europe, though, diplomacy was pretty safe. You know, we didn't want to go to war with uh, with any of the Axes, you know, right away as soon as day two dropped down as we are coming up to day four right now and we basically spent the time just you know building up our forces i went heavy on my navy spending as much of my so, so as many of my resources as possible building dockyards all along the uk and trying to get them destroyers out because destroyers take around about a day to build but luckily i had like four or five dockyards all producing destroyers so when they all popped out i could definitely use them to protect my coastline Attacking AI though throughout the game was completely fine. So as you can see, I've taken over Ireland and also Iceland. I think Iceland, if the Americans were ever going to attack me, would be the most important place for them to take because it leads right into Scotland. It's easy access. So right now, I just wanted to make sure I protect that before they did. I had no, uh, no, like, no plans going into Greenland or anything like that. But I just wanted Iceland to be at least protected because it will give me vision of the kind of surrounding areas. And if anything crazy does happen, hopefully we can at least delay them in Iceland because that will take them a couple of days to take. And then I can, you know, fortify the rest of the UK. Um, because that's obviously my biggest worry, right, is someone sneak invading the UK with a lot of units and then me losing all my resource productions, all my troop building capacity. It's definitely very, very possible. So right now, I'm just kind of patrolling with my navy and making sure that it is pretty safe. The rest of the world vote is, uh, as you can see, there's some big coalitions in America being formed up. I believe there's an East Coast uh, coalition of all of these guys. Yeah, and Cuba as well. So that's a very scary, scary coalition right there. We also have the Central Allies as well. And also the Texans, I believe, are pretty strong, even though they are being attacked right now. This Mexico is being attacked by the, uh, the Colombians. So there's lots of crazy stuff out there. And, you know, China and other factions are just building up and getting stronger. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically been all the events. I do want to run through some of the awesome newspaper articles that have been going on, though. If we go back to day two, I think, there was a really cool event with Germany I want to go ahead and highlight. But as you can see, like, look at all these messages as well going on. So goddamn cool. But yeah, Germany put up this really, really awesome uh, landslide victory. There was a massive election again. This is all just RP, though. No, this didn't happen in game. This is for players creating own storylines for their nations, which is awesome to see. So as you can see, you know, there was a ma massive landslide victory. There was quotes from the, the newly elected leader of Germany saying that he wanted to change the way that Germany was working. Um, as you can see, Germany took a lot of land as well against the AI in the grace period, taking over the whole of Amsterdam and also killing Lithuania and improving their strength over here. Uh, but basically, the Germans in, in that article said that they wanted to take Danzig and Vienna um, and that they're going to declare a war if they don't get given them territory. So tension building up and up against the Axis. But again, these are only for minor bits of territory and stuff. There's no like huge all out wars yet. There's just kind of like small kind of picks off at certain positions, uh, trying to try, you know, trying to like kind of just create fun RP, but not this massive all out war that is going on. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many more news articles, which I would love to show off. It just kind of maybe take me a little while. I mean, if we go back to the first day right now um, as well, yeah, we go back to day zero. You can see a lot of people kind of just you know, preparing themselves, forming their alliances. Day one was great as well. Um, the Allies offer, you know, official response to Turkey, Germany being the spokesman for the Allies. Lots of people condemning certain actions and stuff that broke out through the grace period. 
it was really cool. Panama Canal stuff happening out there. Um, and I will try my best as well uh, to try and cover as much of this action that is going down because it is is really cool throughout the world to see. I think if we go down here, yeah, look at that right now as well. Tibet speaks. You've got the Dalai Lama uh, speaking about peace and prosperity. The Scandinavia, uh, yeah, the Swedish had their, uh, their, their prime minister taken ill and died. And we all went to his funeral and stuff. Uh, right now as well, there's uh, some interesting stuff uh, going on with me, in particular with Iceland. Uh, I don't know where, I think it was last night that it happened. So let me go, yeah, right here, a new, a new alliance right there formed up and they wanted to lay claim to Greenland and Iceland but obviously I held Greece uh, I held Iceland so I obviously said no so we responded saying we refute the North American claims on Iceland and uh, basically writ our article saying you know you can have Greenland we have no quarrels there but we need Iceland to protect the UK from any foreign invaders uh, you know that might happen in the future um, so this is loads of cool stories and that's just my part of the map as well there's so much going on around the rest of the world but i'll leave that up for the uh, next recap point which will be back in a couple days and i mean anything can happen right maybe all that war will break out maybe sweden will come in maybe africa will come in like the alliances are drawn battle plans are ready and we'll have to see what happens in the future of the game Okay guys, welcome back. We are now on day six and things have definitely changed around the world. I believe 20 people have been knocked out. However, on the Western Front, things have been quite, you know, quiet, honestly. The Axes are still alive. However, we have split Italy between myself, France, Romania and Yugoslavia. Uh, I've taken the south of Italy. Uh, Romania has taken the center. Yugoslavia was supposed to take this section and I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and try and maybe take this for myself because I, I don't think they're going to take it. France has been bombarding these forts for years and it's been taking them a while but hopefully they will get it done. But yeah, mostly in Europe things have been pretty quiet until later tonight. Tonight we're going to start a massive war against the Axes. I'll probably bring you guys a recap tomorrow but we're going to go on an all-out offensive war. We've uh, been quite friendly with the Axes however we need to get bigger. The Allies need to grow and we, we need to get stronger because there's so many other alliances around the world who are getting as strong as they can. You know they're killing people and we can't sit back and let them do that. So we're going to go on a massive offensive go against Poland, Romania and Yugoslavia as well as Russia. We're very scared though that we're going to get double teamed by the Finnish and the Swedish and the Archangelists up here to the north. However luckily Kazakhstan out here and our other friend who's not really our friend but hopefully we can convince him to join us. Um, if they do attack us, then Kazakhstan, our other person in the Allies, can just go smashing in from his back, taking away all his resources and infrastructure, and we can just hold. Uh, and hopefully as well, we can get like Greece or Turkey to come in and basically just split up all this territory, which is much, much needed because we need to get stronger. We really, really do. British fleet is looking very, very nice. Uh, I have been uh, focusing it. We've got like six ports working around the clock, building destroyers. I've now got two ports that can now produce light cruisers and soon to be one producing our first battleship. So that's pretty good. And we've got like two or three light cruisers out at the moment. Um, which is pretty good. Yeah, you got a light cruiser fleet right here. And we had a little bit of uh, uh, controversy up here in Iceland. The North Americans wanted Iceland, and I was like, no, there's no way you guys are getting this because it is simply a stepping stone into, you know, the UK. And if I lose this, then the game is basically over for me because you only get 25% of, of the resources from territory you conquer. So if I lose anything in the UK, my game is basically over. And that's why you can see I focus so heavily on the navy my army isn't very good but my navy is superb and yeah the german germans went on patrol i don't know why they did this but they went on patrol and provoked the uh the force of quebec to basically be like look mate if you do this we're gonna kill you uh, and i was like no no we, have, we haven't got no, no plans in america which we don't we have zero plans to go into america um however this definitely caused some controversy and now i think the americans think we're gonna attack them and all of a sudden they're gonna form up their own fleet however if they want to go, I'm more than happy to let my fleet uh, test out some stuff. I've also got a small fleet over here as well, which is just here. Which is just here in case the Finnish do try anything. And then I can use my two light cruisers I have in this fleet to bombard the shoreline and start whittling down some of their forces. So, 
yeah, things are definitely going to heat up. This is probably going to be a smaller update. I'll show you guys the rest of the world as well whilst you're looking. The coalitions in Africa have demolished the Egyptians. Syria pushed in across the sewers and that forced the, uh, the rest of the African alliances to basically eat up Egypt because it's like, well, we don't want the Middle East to get this territory. So they moved in from both sides and conquered Egypt. South America have definitely been stirring up some issues. They've taken Jamestown and apparently they're, a lot, they're amassing a large feet, fleet at Jamestown ready to invade. Uh, Africa, which is going to be very interesting. America, I think, has just been killing a few other, like, like these people aren't in a coalition, this person right here, uh, who is, yeah, the North USA isn't in the coalition, so I wonder if they're going to be getting eaten up by the other factions around them. But overall, there's not been any massive coalition wars out here. Um, over in China, again, the fighting has been pretty back and forth, but it seems like Manchuko and this alliance right here has been doing very good. They've wiped out Japan, and they are taking a large amount of land. Yeah, Manchuko are going hard right now. Um, well, you can also obviously see the big powers over in Russia as well. India has finally pushed down into the Middle East as well. I think they actually wiped out Persia, and the Syrians ended up taking some as well. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're on day six, coming to day seven in five hours. Uh, wars are about to erupt in Europe because of us. And around the world, a lot of people are being wiped out and, and fought over. So it's going to be very interesting. Hopefully I can secure myself the rest of Italy in this war. That's going to be my main goal. We've also obviously got reinforcements coming in to help the Germans who are going to be taking the brunt of the assault. And we just have to hope that we can win this war before the North decide that it's their opportunity to come in. Hopefully they look to take out like Russia or something. And then we can, uh, you know, just maybe split some of this territory later on down the line. Like as soon as they see us attack the Axis, maybe they'll come in and not attack us. But we're ready. We're prepared if anything happens. My fleet is up here protecting the north. I've got ships patrolling along this territory as well just to make sure no one's coming in. And all my ships are on the, the fire at will uh, or the aggressive stance. So if anything neutral or whatever comes in range of my ships, they're going to open up. Because if you're this close to British soil, you're, you're, you, know, you don't have good intentions. Uh, so that's going to be the plan. Technology-wise, we are working pretty heavily on upgrading our ships. I've got air, I've got battleships and aircraft carriers uh, ready to go. I was lucky because some of the nations who did get wiped out, I bargained with them to uh, to give me their resources because they were obviously about to die. And I was saying, I'll put them to good use, don't worry. So as you can see, I've got 32,000 goods right now uh, because I managed to get like 20,000 of one of the dying players down in Africa, which was nice. Uh, rest of the resources are really tough. You can see I've got no food. I also spent like 20,000 gold as well trying to stabilize the uh, the rare material market it's up to 27 30 is the max it's insane how expensive these rare materials are i mean obviously they're rare but they're just ridiculously expensive right now uh, and no one's really been buying them i think two days ago i tried to stabilize this i spent 20,000 gold but the devs gave me and i put up loads of rare materials for like 10 to 15 which it was you know, it wasn't the end of the world because it didn't give me some money um but yeah it, was, it didn't work obviously i thought that i'd maybe try and bring it down a bit and yeah, unfortunately it didn't. I got like 100 grand from it, so it's not the end of the world. I used that money to buy some other resources. I think that was kind of a good way to spend the gold the devs gave me because, um, you know, by spending it that way, it means that, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm giving resources to everyone kind of, um, and I'm making a little bit of money myself, so uh, not all bad. But yeah, that's that's going to be the, the day, day six so far, coming up to day seven. I'll probably be back tomorrow or the day after, and you guys will see what happens with the war in the east, and hopefully it will go well for us. Hopefully. Okay, guys, we are back at the beginning of day eight, or just towards the end of day seven, and the war against the Axis has gone swimmingly. You can see Poland has fallen, Romania has fallen, and Yugoslavia has fallen. Moscow still stands, but for how much longer? I think the city is being bombarded and assaulted from every single direction. And uh, yeah, this was a huge war for us. It was a very important one. We even came up with some really cool, uh, yeah, we came up with a really cool uh, news article written by Germany as well. If I can find it quickly, it was awesome to see. Uh, where is it? Somewhere, yeah, right here. Allies declare war on the Axis power. And the German, German chancellor is basically saying how the Axis are the sick man of Europe and the, the Allies support the, uh, the decision 
and they'll be building up along the borders and ready to push in. It was really cool. Like, all the RP was awesome so far in this. And I want to give a big shout out to all the players who played as the Axis. Uh, unfortunately, the Italian player lost access to his account and couldn't get it back. So it kind of crumbled their alliance. And uh, uh, I mean, even though they did put up a very good fight, this was a hard push into it. And we lost a lot of units to do so. Uh, they still played to the end, they still RP'd it out and they like made, you know, preparations around uh, Bucharest and uh, Belgrade and all their other cities, you know, they made a stand to try and uh, push us back, which was really, really fun. But we've taken a lot of territory. I managed to take the rest of the Romanian territory in Italy, uh, securing Rome, I think literally just like a minute ago, I managed to take Rome, which is really nice. I've also taken the coastline, securing some oil from Yugoslavia, which is really important. Because as you can see, I I'm actually losing oil right now because uh, of all of my ships that I have up and running and all my tanks and other stuff like that and aircraft. Um, but yeah, right now we are basically just trying to finish off these last pockets of resistance. You can see a few of the, uh, the forces right here just going in, trying to take down the last kind of couple units that are still holding in cities and forts and other stuff like that. We're also obviously mustering up on our other borders as our ally of Kazakhstan, who is the other person in our coalition, right, this guy right here, has now attacked Archangelist and the, the Swedish have also betrayed their alliance and gone against the Finnish also trying to backstab them we kind of agreed with them but if they did this we'd leave them alone and let them have the whole of scandinavia which i think is a a just cause right there but they still need to kill the finish the finish is still pretty scary uh, indeed uh, but yeah as you can see like europe is looking good we have we've wiped out the other major power in europe and now we can spend the next couple of days just really building up our infrastructure improving the land we just got and going on from there. Unfortunately, my, my plea with uh, spending the, go the gold the devs gave me to try and reduce the cost of rare materials just did not work. It's still up at 30, but no one's buying it and no one's selling it. So, uh, yeah, it's just kind of a bit of a messed up market. As well as that, like, the steel is so, like, cheap right now. It's ridiculous how cheap the steel is. I'm going to buy it. Like, 2.6 a unit? Hell yeah. Like, that is ridiculously cheap. Goods and foods have still been holding their value, but... Uh, I think oil is also, yeah, oil's really cheap as well, so I might actually buy some of that as well. Uh, maybe not that much, but like 3,000 barrels or something, because I need all of that for my ships. And we now do have our first battleship. These bad boys are insane. They can do so much damage at bombarding coastlines. And uh, yeah, you can see our, our naval blockade right here, just protecting the coastline. As I said, we have no ambitions to go into America, but we can't not, you know, expect them to feel the same way. And uh, yeah, we definitely fortified up this coastline. All my ships are on fire at will, and we're getting some juicy, juicy ships now. My dockyards have been working overtime. I've had like six dockyards working non-stop to pump out these destroyers, cruisers, carriers, everything, you name it. I'm trying to build it because, you know, if, as soon as I lose any part of the UK, it's over for me. So I really have to stop that from happening. And realistically, this is the only way it can come in and uh, happen. So we'll just have to try and hold our line. But yeah, really successful battle against the Axis. Uh, we pushed in deep and now the next couple of days, probably the next update you guys will see in a couple of days, will just be us kind of like preparing for our next assault somewhere maybe uh, or moving on in a different direction. We'll have to see. But yeah, this was very good, very fruitful, lots of resources and we should be good to, to rebuild after this war. So uh, yeah, let's move on to the next day and I'll see you guys there. Okay, guys, so this is the last day that you're going to be seeing in today's video. Uh, we are up to day 11 now, and as you can see, the world has changed massively over these 11 days. There's been massive expansion in the east of Asia, taking over the whole of Siberia. We have just started our new invasion in, uh, in the Middle East, moving into Turkey and trying to take out Syria with the support of the African nations, as Syria did hold territory in Egypt. They really, really wanted, so we kind of of, you know buddied up with them saying we'll both attack at the same time and we are now pushing in i'm gonna hopefully be taking crete with a small force that i have here just some infantry and some anti-air my battleships have made it to the mediterranean as well i have a pretty gnarly feet i have a kind of a small cruiser destroyer fleet which is more fast moving can get around to cover my transports and then i have the bulkier battleship fleet with lots of destroyers to protect from submarines and other stuff like that with cruisers protecting from air so it's pretty, you know, pretty disgusting fleet. I have two battleships there as well. We also have I had a pretty easy time of it. We've kind of set up a proxy uh, coalition as well alongside ours. So we are obviously the allies between uh, me, France, Spain, Germany, um, and uh, and Kazakhstan. And we also have the Commonwealth, which we've just formed, which is Sweden, who did betray 
Finland just disgusting behavior. We definitely did not orchestrate that like the CIA. Uh, but yeah, they betrayed Finland and Arch Archangel, uh, which I kind of feel bad for, but it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out here. Uh, and then we also have uh, this Russian player as well, Volker Niski, or however you pronounce it, along with Greece. So we have like kind of some powerful allies in Europe itself. But Europe has fallen. You can see that, you know, after the war against the Axis, we completely cleaned up. Germany took a ton of land. I took some land out here as well, just securing some oil fields and some food because I am hurting for oil and food. You can see that I am, uh, yeah, obviously fielding such a large navy that my, my food is kind of a big problem. But yeah, and basically the rest of the next couple of days will be uh, us pushing into Turkey, into Syria, into Saudi Arabia. And trying to secure the, the rich oil fields, obviously. That's something I'm desperately looking forward to, is taking, you know, the, this food in Jerusalem and Jafar and uh, the, the oil fields around here as well. Like, I desperately need this part of the territory because of just how, you know, how resource-starved I actually am becoming uh, with such a large navy that I do have. I also obviously have an Atlantic army as well. This is obviously just going to be safeguarding mainland territory. But tensions are definitely rising. It seems like the Brazilians at this very moment are looking to take this Spanish uh, island with their fleet. And it's not a bad fleet whatsoever, you know. Three destroyers, you got uh, two level three battleships, two level three carriers. Like, that's pretty scary, honestly. Uh, obviously not going to be a match for my northern fleet. Like, I could definitely exchange that and, and probably come out on top. I have uh, some decent, you know, fleets and I have plenty more battleships and carriers on their way. Along with a ton more ships which just spawned. So I could definitely come down. I'm probably going to send my fleet down here just to safeguard this island if worse comes to worse. And if they take it, we are not going to let that. Spain already let go of this island down here to the uh, to the South Americans. So we are definitely, definitely not going to let them take this island because it's just far too close to Spanish territory. Uh, the Americans, there was some pretty crazy stuff in the Americans as well. They betrayed the Texans and the other two American coalitions ate them up. Uh, with the support of the South Americans. However, I've got word. I know for a fact that the South Americans are planning on attacking the Americans. Uh, so I don't know if that was a great idea to work with them. They definitely weakened their position there. Indeed. Africa as a whole has come together as one massive coalition. They formed like the United African Nations or something like that. The AUN, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, kind of like what we've done in Europe, right? We've kind of joined our coalition with the Commonwealth between the uh, Sweden, Greece and... Uh, uh, I, can't, I always forget what this faction is called, but Russian faction right here. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Again, South America are once again in the midst of this. They, they have been saying they want to invade Africa for a long time. So it'll be interesting to see where the South Americans do go. Whether it's into the rich lands of America or into the rich lands of Africa. Their they're, they're world is their oyster. Um, and again, like... We're, we're taking out the South, we're taking out the Middle East. That, that's kind of been our plan for the past like five days, and it's gonna be very interesting to see how that does, uh, how that does like kind of affect things and how that makes you know things changing. Luckily, though, the Greeks are gonna be just be pouring in to it uh, very very quickly, which is pretty nice. Also, uh, we do have Istanbul as well, getting pretty close to the to, to falling there. That's not a bad city as well for the Greeks to have. So I should obviously make the Greeks extremely strong. So that should be exciting to see how they do come out on top there uh, but yeah cool that's basically the, the way things are after 11 days in the campaign obviously there's still more to come you guys are going to get another update video uh, towards the end of this game um, so yeah, once again, massive thank you to the, uh, guy, the developers for sponsoring this video. I've had so much fun here. The newspaper has been awry with uh, really cool articles. It's kind of a bit of a mess now because there's a few people just talking in it, but it's been filled with amazing RP. And everyone who has been putting RP in, even when you're losing, like Russia held Moscow for like three days and they were completely surrounded and they were RPing out the entire time. It was just really, really awesome. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, Make sure to go ahead and leave some comments down below. Uh, let me know what you guys think the allies should do next. And I'll see you guys in the next one.